First of all, extreme states in a process work sense just means a state that's on the end of the spectrum, percentage-wise. You don't see that state as often as other states in, its, in a given culture. What's an extreme state in one culture is normal in another culture. So they're culturally specific. And also extreme states tend to be more prolonged, altered states that are harder to come in and out of. There's less control um, and things like that. So what's my view or a process work view of extreme states? Well, there's many, but one is the idea of the city shadow, meaning that you, whoever has an extreme state, pick up parts of life that the rest of us aren't living out. You're like, whatever, we're all in this city, we all want to be super nice, and over there that goes into the atmosphere, and you have to balance us by becoming super aggressive, or we're all super materialistic. You have to balance that by being on the corner speaking about God, something like that. Um, so that's a very helpful concept in a way, that you're actually doing something helpful. So I want to give you my latest thought on extreme states. First of all, it's very complex. It's everything together. Extreme states have biological components, psychological components, social issue components, um, political components, spiritual components. And so I don't want to oversimplify it. Um, but a lot of what I find in extreme states are parts of oneself that have been pushed out by either you as a person, your family, or your culture and your world. And those parts, and often they're like powers, are so pushed out that the way they come out is so troublesome to us and to our culture. But at their core, they are often very, very powerful. I can't tell you how many people in extreme states I've helped pick up the potential powers in their extreme state. And as they integrate those powers, they are able to um, be uh, more free of those states and use them more consciously. Um, I could just give you um, examples. For example, um, working with somebody who was diagnosed bipolar, and I worked with them. And out of that state came, in at first, an incredible sense of being able to heal with their hands. And then they began to be able to channel um, uh, influential people in their work organization, uh, founders of companies that had passed on and stuff like that. They didn't tell anybody what they were doing, but they rose to be like the, the head of the company almost based on this channeled information. So they had all these powers. Um, I've had other people. Uh, with extreme states who become great teachers, wonderful therapists, incredible artists. There's incredible power um, to handle in there. I was just working recently with a young person with very severe extreme states, and uh, the family said, should we, does he need to be locked up? I said, I don't know about that, hospitalized, but let's try some things. And what I said was, I'm going to train him, and that's my newest thing. When people contact me with extreme states, I'm often entering into a kind of training where I'm training them in how to use that power in a way that's good for their being. So most of what psychiatry does, and I, don't, I understand that because there are, haven't been many other options, is to hold all that energy down, medicate it away. But if people could instead be trained in how to use that power consciously, it's much more useful. So sometimes I'll say, you can't, if somebody, for example, um, is out of an extreme state and they, want, and they say, but well, now I'm so flat or whatever, I go back and I help them pick up little bits of those powers at a time so it doesn't freak them out or flip them out. So the idea that, in a way, many extreme states are marginalized powers and experiences that people need help integrating and they need training into how to work with them. And if you do that and can pick that up, often you're not only, it not only changes your life, but you're somebody who's meant to change society. You move from being a shadow of society, a city shadow, to a city mover and shaker often. Um, so it's, it sounds easier than it is. And on, the, uh, and on the other hand, I've just had a lot of really good experiences where people come through their severe depressions, their... Um, 
bipolar states. Um, their ADHD, I've had amazing experiences with young people picking up the powers under ADHD. Um, um, and um, also clearing the trauma that fuels a lot of um, extreme states. So I just want to end with that. That under a lot of extreme states is, as you mentioned, um, PTSD, post-traumatic stress. But that's not, for me, a mental illness. I love that a lot of people lately call PTSD a moral injury. So if you work on the trauma, many of the many times the extreme state is a extreme reaction to trauma. And if you can help the person work on the trauma, then the whole thing starts to transform and the extreme state finds a different home in the person. So it's very, very important work. Um, I think it's one of the places where process work is most groundbreaking. And by the way, we're not against or for medication or hospitalization or anything like that. Our job is to follow the person's process. So if someone comes to me and they say, I'm taking this medication and I love it, and it makes me more calm, I might say, fantastic, and would you like to do some things to become even more calm? And on the other hand, if someone comes to me and says, I got a diagnosis of bipolar, I can't take the medication, I don't want to, it makes me feel bad, can you help me work without it? Um, and if I can, if the person can stay safe long enough and if I can work with them, I'll say, sure, let's try that. Let's, let's try to follow your process as long as you can, as long as I can keep the person and other people around them safe. Um, so anyway, so to, to close, following someone's process and following your own process very, very closely in extreme states, those extreme states can transform and become sources of incredible power and they often have a spiritual component. That's why a lot of people uh, talk about spiritual emergencies in extreme states and stuff like that. But the point is calling it a spiritual emergency is one thing, but being able to help someone like you transform that is a whole nother thing. And it doesn't always work in process work, but it's a start. And also because it's a city thing, usually if someone comes out of an extreme state, the question then is how do you help them transform their family, transform their work, transform their city, transform the world. <laughs>